Hello everyone, it's Darkseeker here, bringing you a 12-win Hunter Arena. So we're just going to go straight into the draft. Um, Ball of Spiders. I want to see what it does, and so we're going to pick it. Uh, Glaive Zooka, um, excellent for the early game, buffs up your minions uh, with attack power, tremendous for trading uh, and controlling the board. Um, no Mission Venter, I think is actually a decent pick here. Arcane Shot is quite aggressive. Uh, it also helps you maintain the board, but the Inventor's decent for the card draw. Web Spinner, absolutely. Combos with the Glaive Zooka. Um, definitely really good there for us. Um, Acolyte of Pain or Blackwing Technician, I think we'll go with the Acolyte because of the card draw. It is a slow card, but I am conscious of the need for card draw. Uh, Amani Berserker, I think, is, is a really good two drop, so it is absolutely the pick. Stone Task 4 has charge. I think it's worth picking that over the Timberwolf. Um, so let's go with the, let's go with the boar. Uh, the charge is useful, potentially. Spectral Knight uh, or the Wolf Rider. We'll go with the Knight. It's a full six, can't be targeted by spells. The Wolf Rider is good if you want to be a tad more aggressive, though. Uh, Dragonhawk Rider has Wind Fury. I, I think it's decent. I can assume that we will be hero powering a lot in Hunter games. It's such a valuable thing to do. So we're going to pick the Dragonhawk Rider because of the Wind Fury effect when you cast your hero power. Um, yeah, absolutely. Okay, Eagle Horn Bow, absolutely, all day, every day. Uh, weapons are really, really good. The more weapons, the better. Eagle Horn Bow for maintaining board presence, uh, board control rather, is excellent. Um, we're going to go with the Silver Hand Knight here. It's a 4 4 and a 2 2 on board for 5. That's crazy stats. Definitely worthwhile. Unleash the Hounds. Amazing card. Um, we're hoping to pick up a bit more beast synergy in this deck. Uh, so we'll go with Unleash for now. Uh, here we will pick the Wargan Infiltrator. Really, really good on turn 1. Synergizes with Glaive Zooka. Uh, allows the Hunter to have an aggressive start. So now is the time to pick it. We already have a Dragonhawk Rider. Steamweedle Sniper, excellent card for, for two cost, that will let you target other enemy minions. It's a tremendous card if used correctly, well worth picking. Bloodstail Raider synergizes with our weapons. It's a two drop, we need two drops, and we have two weapons, so you have to pick the Raider here. Evil Heckler is a taunt, we're going to go with the Heckler, it's a 5-4. Stats are decent, uh, taunts are always, always good. Okay, North Sea Kraken. Uh, always pick a Kraken, or at least always pick your first Kraken that's offered to you. It's a rule of thumb, I think. It's such a, a value-orientated card. Freezing Trap, I think, is the pick here. Over the Silent Knight. Uh, uh, it'll synergize potentially with the Eagle Horn Bow, uh, which is really good. Deadly Shot. We need one Deadly Shot. Uh, it is so essential, I think, for maintaining ball presence, uh, killing a big minion. Uh, Metal Tooth Leaper here, it's a 3-3. We can do with the body. We don't have any mechs, but it's fine. Boulder Fist Ogre, probably one of the best six drops in Arena. It's 6-7. Tremendous stats for the late game. Uh, having one of those is always very, very good. Uh, I like the Lost Tall Strider here. We need stuff to do on turn four. It's better than the Snowball. It's also a beast. So if we pick up a Kill Command later, it'll be tremendous. Okay, uh, Mech Warper, decent 2-3 body. We're sort of lacking Mech Synergy, although we do have the Metal Tooth Leaper, so there is something there. Okay, Argent Horse Rider or Scavenging Hyena. I'm going to go with the Hyena here, even though most people would pick the Horse Rider. Scavenging Hyena has Synergy with Unleash the Hounds, okay, and um, the Lost Horse Rider and the Web Spinner. So it's decent. Uh, here we pick the second hyena. Now the beast synergy is really starting to come through. Uh, double hyena with unleash could be insane. Okay, this situation, you do pick the horse rider now. It's still a really good card. Um, we're going to keep this deck aggressive, I think, with a good early start. The horse rider helps to do that with the charge effect. Cult Master, really good card. We do need some more some more cards to play on turn four plus it does synergize with unleash the hounds and it's a four attack minion it's actually pretty decent if you've been aggressive kill command here i think is the way to go we do have some beasts now in this deck so kill command could be a good finisher for us okay multi shot really good for maintaining uh, control of the board here tundra rhino is good but i don't think we have enough beasts to justify picking tundra rhino 
And the final pick is Sludge Belcher, one of the best taunts in the game. Uh, I think second only to the, uh, the Sunwalker. Um, so yeah, the Belcher does protect you as you head into that late game. So there's our draft. Now that draft was super, super quick. I usually take a bit more time with my, uh, my drafting process and I explain the picks in a bit more detail. But this, ladies and gents, is a hunter. And we wanna go quick with this. This is the aim. Uh, you'll notice this video is slightly shorter than my usual 12 win runs. Well, it is a hunter after all and the games are quicker. So here we go. This is my 12 win hunter run. Uh, I was incredibly proud of this run. I wasn't expecting it to go 12 wins and um, you know it, it was a really fun experience going through the games. Uh, so let's start off and we're going up against another hunter and look at the hand. Look at the opening hand. It's a tremendously uh, aggressive opening hand starting off with the Worgen Infiltrator 2-1 Stealth and we've got the Glaive Zooka. Now he didn't have a play and this is tremendous for me because now I have a choice. I can either go with the Glaive Zooka or I can play the 2-3, um, the, the Sniper. And I'm going to set up the sniper because I can now target minions he plays. And the chances are they're going to be low health minions to begin with because it's early turn. Oh, that's a that's not good. Okay, wasn't it? Was not expecting that. Uh, that's that's really really bad for me. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to uh, we need to kill the sheep. Now, we can snipe it down with the hero power. That's what the Steam Wheel Sniper allows us to do. Um, but now, what I'm going to do, actually, is um, I value playing a minion. I'm going to kill the sheep. And we're going to play uh, the horse, the charging horse. Uh, the cavalry is indeed here, but it's got the divine shield intact. So I want to get double value out of the horse here, the charging horse. Uh, Arcane Shot. Now, that was a card I was offered in my draft. I didn't pick it. And now you can see it's worth, you can really see it's worth it. He's, well he cleared the sniper and has maintained board control now with a 3-3 to contest my 2-1. Unfortunately for him, well, I have a Glaive Zuka, which, oh look, a perfect and clean kill. Fantastic. So, yep, board control back to me. And this is the nature of Hunter games. It, you know, things move quickly. Um, <laughs> players make snap decisions. It's pretty interesting. Okay, there's a trap. He didn't spend very long thinking about that. So here's my assumption. My assumption is it's explosive trap. Now, do I attack or do I not attack? You see, there is a theory that says, well, attack as soon as you can to get the trap out the way so you're not hindered by it on later turns. Unfortunately though, I mean I've got five attack on board, that's that's worth a lot to me. Um, I can trigger the trap in other ways later quite easily. I mean I can even attack face with my weapon if needed to trigger it. So it's fine. That is assuming it is exposed to trap though. It could be anything. It could be snake trap, it could be freezing trap, it could be, uh, it could be anything. Um, okay, so we're going to attack the 2-4. We're going to clear the board. Yeah, okay. It's um, it's not freezing. So it has to be explosive. No, it's bear trap. Wow. That's fine. Um, see, we use, the, uh, we use the weapon there to trigger the trap. Uh, it's absolutely fine. Um, okay. It's a bear trap. And there's a bear. There's a 3-3 bear on the board. Tremendous. <clears throat> huh, Armored Warhorse. Hmm. That's bad. Well... It's not that bad. Because look, multi-shot. So this hunter is super aggressive too, having drafted charging minions or charging big charging horses with five attack uh this is it's quite tremendous it's quite tremendous for him uh unfortunately though i have a boulder fistoga with seven health on board good luck dealing with that um okay so we value the damage here and uh, I know that his deck plays charging horses, so therefore Sludge Belcher is going to protect me, hopefully. Um, 
So what's he got? Even the... Oh no, he's got nothing. There we go. Um, the Kraken was, was patiently waiting till turn 9 there. You'll have noticed it in the hand. Um, patiently waiting. Okay. Um, heading into the next game then. Heading into the next game. Right, so we're going up against another another hunter. Um, hunt this is quite interesting. This is quite interesting. Um, I wasn't expecting another hunter. You sort of now at this point you start to expect mages and paladins. I mean, we're only in the second game, but um, in my my recent arena runs, I've been facing nothing but mages and paladins, and that's your expectation now. Uh, so you, you become surprised when you see anything else, any other class. Uh, but look at the, look at the opening hand, uh, double scavenging hyena. And this is going to be a fascinating game. And he starts off with a dragon egg. Now, that's quite a slow start for a hunter, to be honest, either in arena or in constructed. Um, you'd expect a Wargan Infiltrator, a Web Spinner, something like something similar to that on turn one. If he doesn't have a way of activating the Dragon Egg, then I should be safe. But that has to be in the back of your mind. Does he have a Defender of Argus? Does he have a, a, a Dark Iron Dwarf? Does he have a way of activating it? So I'm going to play double Hyena, and, and there's a reason for that. The Blood Cell Raider synergizes with my weapon, and so I want to save the Raider for later. And of course, I have Kill Command now, and I can kill the 4-4. I think that's a, a worthy, a worthy thing to do because it trades too easily with the hyenas. And we go face. So I'm protecting my hyenas. They are an investment. I see great worth in them because when a beast dies, they get buffed up. What I'm really waiting for is Unleash the Hounds. Now, in August, I had a 12-win hunter run. That was prior to TGT. And uh, I had amazing hyena value in that run. So I want to see if we can manage this again now, okay? Let's, let's see whether we can achieve similar things. Um, and there's the Blood Cell Raider. And there's the value. And we go face. We do what all good hunters do, go face. Face is the place. Uh, it is it's strange that, uh, saying that. It feels strange saying that because a uh, mid-range hunter is actually my favourite deck uh, in Hearthstone and that kind of hunter relies on sort of board control really uh, and then choosing the right moment to go face. Um, <clears throat> in this situation though, when you look at what I've got on board, I'm threatening so much damage, uh, seven, eight, nine damage, plus the weapon, plus the hero power. I mean, he's almost dead. I've got a and, what I'm, it's, and it's my turn four. Um, and he's had to resort there to the, uh, the commander, the Stormpike Commando. Uh, unfortunately though, it's not going to be enough for him because I can kill the commando quite easily. But the decision I have to make is, do I go face with the hyenas um, or, do I, uh, or do I trade? You see, now the cautious player in me is rearing his head and saying, well, no, 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 Darkseeker, you must, you must trade and maintain control of the board. That's the mid-range hunter in me, sitting on my right shoulder. And on my left shoulder, there's this face hunter saying, go face, go face, face is the place. Uh, but no, um, I'm going to trade. I'm actually going to trade. Because um, I'm scared. I'm scared of something. I'm scared, really. I, I, I don't feel comfortable uh, leaving stuff on the board that he can use. And there's the Fen Creeper. Interesting. Um, hmm. Yeah, maybe I should have gone face after all. Maybe. Um, but we'll use the multi-shot here. And it's fine because we get a clean trade with one high hyena and the other one gets buffed and look, we draw a card. See, I'm pretty glad we picked Acolyte of Pain. Um, I think a lot of 
a lot of pro players probably would have dismissed that pick and said, no, you know, you shouldn't pick Acolyte when you've got this sort of semi-aggressive hunter deck. But it's working out for us. We're drawing a card and drawing a card is so important. Or drawing cards, you know, is, is, is so important. Um, okay, I could go face and hear a power here. Um, and I could send the horse to the Don't face worry, as well. Um, yeah, the cavalry. We could go face. Uh, but no. See, a more aggressive player would have just hero powered, sent Halsey to face, uh, and then just kept on hero powering and count on the fact that he can't kill you over over the next few turns. Um, but no, we, we, will, we will trade and maintain board control. Right, he's got a Ram Wrangler, and he gets a hyena too. Ah, but it's not enough. I think the only thing that would have saved in there would be the uh, the Timberwolf into Unleash the Hounds, perhaps. Um, but that, there we go. That's our second game. These games are really, really quick, um, and it is a testament to Hunter. Just being a class that uh, uh, that that is so um, so aggressive at points. Now let's reflect on this deck. This deck does have a reasonably aggressive start with the Glaivezuka, the Worgen. The, uh, the hyenas, the web spinners, it, it, it can have an aggressive start. But there are some nice sort of end game cards too. Uh, and you can slow things down with this deck. You know, Boulder Fist Ogre, Sludge Belcher. You can defend yourself and slow down, uh, which is not too bad. Okay, so this deck seems to be a bit of a, I'd call it a bit of a hybrid deck, I guess. Um, you can you can set the pace of the game, or you can react to your opponent and uh, you know defend yourself if needed. It's just slow things down a little bit. Um, a Manly Berserker is a, a tremendously strong card to play as your first card. Uh, you're forcing him to have a Frostbolt, a Flame Cannon, or to answer it with a three attack minion. Uh, if he doesn't have any of those things, he's in trouble, and he has a slow turn. Uh, so he has a chugger chugger. Um, slow chugger. Hmm. <clears throat> Interesting card. Now I have a decision to make here. Um, I can kill the chugger, or I can play my boar and go face. What do I value doing here? Do I want to be aggressive? If I go face, what could he do to me? What could he do? I mean, could he draw into a Frostbolt and then kill my Armani? I'm going to trade. I'm going to be cautious. There's the cautious player in me wanting to trade. Um, so maybe that was a mistake. Maybe if you're a pro player and you're watching this game, you're thinking, oh, that Dark Seeker, he doesn't know what he's doing. Um, but the point is, Snow Chugger is dangerous because if, you, if it starts freezing your face, and he keeps that snow chugger on board, maybe combos it with a water elemental. I have weapons in this deck that I need to use. So we had to kill the chugger. Um, it, it, uh, it was, it's important, it really is. Uh, so, okay, fine. Your mother was a murloc. Okay, fair enough. Uh, the evil heckler doing what he does best, heckling. Um, so, the 4-3 shredder, I'm happy if he trades that into the 5-4. Um, I'm expecting a fireball there, but no. Ooh, he gets a mech walker. That could be bad for us if he's got mechs. Um, and we've already seen the snow chugger, so this could be um, uh, uh, this could be a mech mage uh, who was supposed to be on the ladder but got confused and went into arena. Uh, that's not a mech. Okay, what do you got? Hero power? Mana worm. Okay, do you have a spell? No, you just have a hero power. That's fine. Okay, so he pinged the Wind Fury minion. I can understand why. I need to get absolute value from this Wind Fury now, so I'm gonna hero power and I'm gonna kill two minions. Yeah. Let the pain speak to me. Okay, so we can now 
sort of you can sort of move forward now and look towards card draw, um, which you know is 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 quite important because uh, you look at the hand there. There are four cards in hand, and they're all pretty decent. I mean, they're all three of them are five drops, um, but. I'd like to get some weapons, please. I'd like the eagle horn bow. He's going to give me two cards. That's really kind of him. Oh, look, there's a weapon. Okay. He has four cards. I have more cards than him. So now I've just got to think of the best way to um, go about dealing with his board. And maybe the sludge belcher. It's good. It can test both minions. He'd have to trade both of them in, and then I can finish off the uh, the Dragon King Sorcerer with um, the Glaive Zooka. Uh, oh dear. That's really bad. That's really, really bad, actually. Um, oh. Okay. So now I need to make a decision on how to, uh, how to approach this. Um, I really want to kill the Dragon King. Because that false tank max is going to obliterate my my sludge belcher. Um, it's just going to, yeah, it's just going to absolutely obliterate it. So I need to get maximum value mm. out of the belcher, and I think the best way to get value out of it is to kill the dragonkin sorcerer, um, and then we can play the silver hand. So I'm going to trade into the dragonkin here. Um, perhaps. The better play is just to kill the mech warper with the weapon and go face with the belcher. Well played. Um, but I want to get value. Yeah, I want to get value. So this is what I'm going to do. Uh, he now has to trade his mech warper into the belcher, or he could use the uh, the false tank. <clears throat> but I've killed the three five. Oh, he doesn't have to do any of that. He has flame strike. Um, and do you know what? This game's now over. I lose. Just like that, um, a mage can, can turn a game around and he has a false tank and a mech warper. Uh, and I have no chance now of contesting that 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, the only thing that would do it would be kill command with the beast on board and then tanking it uh, with my weapon. So... The best option here is to flood the board um, as best as possible. Flood the board with with two minions. That's not a flood; it's a trickle. So, and, and just see um, how I can somehow think about getting back in control of the board. There's a secret now. What is it? It's probably going to be mirror entity or counter spell. Um, wouldn't surprise me if it was effigy. It wouldn't surprise me if it was duplicate. You see, ice barrier used a lot. Actually, yeah, there are so many possible secrets. Um, sorry, excuse me. We've got a bit of a cold. Um, <clears throat> the um, um, there's the kill command, <clears throat> but hmm. I can't really, I can't really, um, I, I don't want to face tank that 7-5. So we're going to use the charging horse, and we're going to, oh, uh, it's counter spell. Yep, this game's over. <laughs> this game is over. I hunt alone. <clears throat> This game's over. Do you know, if I could kill the false tank, I would have had a chance. Um, but, uh, yeah. It's over. I am master of magic. Oh, that's not too bad. It's a 1-4. What's that going to do? Oh, that's bad. That's really bad. <laughs> yeah, sure. King face. Yeah. He's going for maximum damage now. Um, 
Okay, so that's not very good. As I can't play both of those cards. And uh, yeah, it's over. I can't actually clear the force tank. So um, because of the, um, the taunts. So I think my opponent, the mage there, I think he got super lucky in that game. Um, and I'm not salty over it. I think um, it's RNG uh, to an extent in terms of, um, you know, just drawing those right cards at the right time. He was able to play Mirror Image at that specific point, and it stopped me from clearing the uh, the false tank. So, yeah, good for him. Okay, so it's another mage. Why am I not surprised? And that opening hand is... Well, I was going to say it's okay. Because we have a, a Worgen Infiltrator for turn Hello? one. And we can coin out the bow on turn two. So, yeah, it's okay. It could be better, you know? It could be a lot better, but it's all right. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to complain too much. Right, so the Trog, the 2-3. Now, we need to kill it. And the only way to kill it, really, is to bow it down. We could coin out Kill Command. That is a waste. So we'll use the bow. This is what the bow was intended for, clearing minions. Now, because we used the coin, we gave it plus one attack. I'm okay with that. Um, I'll take three damage rather than two. That's fine. Um, we don't reveal the wargun because he can just ping it. I want to get value out of that wargun. Um, so here comes the web spinner and we're going to hero power. I hunt alone. And now I am going to reveal the Worgen, and I'm now going to say to him, ping it, or choose which one you want to ping. The beast is a, the web spinner is a beast, so you want to ping that surely because of kill command. But no, he's he's going to ping the uh, he's going to ping the Worgen, which is fine. Which is absolutely fine. Um, I was trying to give him a choice there. I was hoping he'd ping the web spinner because he'd be scared of um, he'd be scared of beasts. But uh, uh, clearly, clearly not. Clearly not. Um, he doesn't fear kill command. But not that I would kill commander three two. You see, this is the, this is the interesting thing. So maybe in hindsight, I should not have revealed the wargan because. After pinging, you know, how much mana does he have left to play with? Not very much. So he's not going to play something that's worthy of kill command. Uh, so maybe that was a misplay on my part. I don't know. I'll let you decide. Was that clever strategy? Was it a misplay? I don't know. Was I trying to mess with him there? Trying to get into his head? Oh, who knows? Um, okay, fine. We will, uh, we will play the No Mission Venter. And we'll force him to ping the web spinner now. Or ping the inventor and trade. Either way, he will not get full value from a ping. Because the ping is now worth two damage. Um, and he's not going to get full value. See that? He's going he's gonna to ping the web spinner for two damage there rather than one. And he didn't get full value. I'm quite pleased with that. Um, I'm really pleased with that. So... Now, we need to look at which minion do we feel more threatened by. Are we threatened by the, 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 the Raging Worgen, which is a 3-3? Three, three? Um, or are we threatened by the 3-2 that gives him plus one ping power, uh, plus one damage on his hero power ping? What, what are we more threatened by? Uh, this is the question, and it's a very important question. Uh, and I feel so threatened by um, by the worgen that I'm gonna I'm gonna use kill command and I'm gonna trade now you may look at that play and think what a waste what a waste of a play what a waste of a kill command but I, I need I needed to get rid of both of those minions I, I really did um, if I left the worgen alive he will ping it on his turn and activate wind fury for himself. So that's why I did it. Now, the three five, it's an annoyance, but um, the Sludge Belcher does protect me there. 
it'll absorb a trade. I stand corrected. The sludge belcher is now a sheep and it absorbs nothing. Oh, he trades. Oh yes, he's scared of kill command, isn't he? He's already, he's already seen one kill command and he saw me use it liberally. So he's probably thinking, oh, that hunter, he must have several kill commands in hand. If he was just gonna throw one away on a worgen without the beast activation, oh dear, yes. So, you'll notice there I went face um, with the horse. And that's, 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 it's an aggressive play. But it's a, I think it's an okay play to make. Um, you're putting, see, forcing him to ping the shield there and trade. I mean, I've I've just prevented three damage to my face. I think that's I think that's good progress. You know. <clears throat> okay, now unleash the hounds. Yes, it buffs up the um, the, the, the trog. I, I I don't care because I'm going to kill it. Um. What I'm trying to decide on here is Cult Master or the Evil Heckler. I value card draw. This is what will win me the game, ultimately, outvaluing the mage and being aggressive. And I've just drawn two cards. I think that's tremendous. It really is. Now I'm saying to him, you've got to trade your Sky Golem into my, into my Cult Master. Um, it's the Cult Master is protecting the, um, the chicken, the Lost Horse Rider. The 5-4. It's been protected. I think that's a, a, a significant play. But of course, it's a mage. He has two polymorphs. Of course. I'm a hunter, and I've only got one kill command in my deck. He's a mage, and he has two. Count them, yes. Double polymorph. It's ridiculous. Anyway, I'm not salty. Just commenting on the state of play with mage. That's all. The next question, of course, is how many flame strikes? That's that's the next question. How many fireballs? How many frost bolts? This is always the question with mage. Squire, attend me. Okay. Ready, sir. Bit of green tea there, trying to soothe this cold. <clears throat> Drink with me, friend. Oh dear. That's bad. Uh, the Enhancer Meccano, back to his hand. Uh, if he were to use that on a board with two or three minions, I could be dead. Because that card will give minions wind fury. Uh, that's really bad. I need to get rid of things from this board quickly. And so Deadly Shot hits the highest attack minion. That's pretty good. I'm even going to use Freezing Trap because I'm so scared. Your mother was a Murloc. Fair enough. Um, uh, yeah, that, that Enhancer Meccano cannot be put down on a board of minions because if it is, I could very well die. So I'm, I'm, I'm feeling that threatened. I've used a freezing trap on the 3-2. Again, I appreciate that some players would look at that and think, that's a terrible play. Save your freezing trap for a big minion. Well, it, to me in this situation, it's about controlling the board um, because he's nearly dead. He's at 16. Well. I'm nearly dead, I'm at 18, and yes, I say nearly dead, because a mage with double fireball just needs to hit my face a couple more times with a minion, and then I'm dead. And it's a mage. There is every chance that there is a double fireball in that hand, or, or some form of pyroblast, or, I don't know, triple frostbolt. It's a mage, they do mage things. So, um, anywho, decision here is do I trade on the board, or do I go face? Well, let's get some spiders on the board and let's go face. Sure. Oh, I had lethal. Oh, of course. Sorry, missed that. Yep, whoops. Missed lethal in the commentary, but saw it in the actual game. Whoopsie daisy. Um, yeah, sometimes you, you look at the board and you, uh, <laughs> you're so obsessed with... Um, thinking about clearing and how you survive that um, it's sometimes p possible to miss the fact that you can actually kill your opponent with what you have on the board and that you don't Next need to trade. Okay, so we're 3-1 now, we're 3-1. 
and uh, we're going up against a warrior. Now, statistically, warrior is sort of the weakest class in, in arena, statistically, based on, the, based on, I think, her arena stats. Now, the, the trouble is with warrior, you never know what you're up against. If this warrior has weapons and uh, other, other interesting cards that can keep board control on his side, then I could be in for a very rough time. Because, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I, I went 12 wins. With a, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, a grim patron um, arena deck. I went 12 wins, and um, that, that game, that, that series of games, rather, is on my YouTube channel. And if you just search for Grim Patron in my video section, you'll find it. And um, I never expected to go 12 wins with that deck. Okay, yes, I had a Warsong Commander as well. But I went 12 wins. And I was quite surprised. And ever since that experience, um, I have sort of think to myself, well, um, any warrior that I could face in Arena could be similar to, to the deck that I had. And... Um, yeah, I just got to be really cautious. I should not underestimate warriors, even if the stats say that it's okay to underestimate them because they don't win very much. So, anyway. So, Armor Smith is out. Um, do I care about it too much? Do I really care? Do I? Do I? Yeah. I care. And I'm going to save the weapon. There we go. Okay. So, 8 attack on board, plus 2 from the weapon, that's 8, 9, 10, plus hero power 12. Okay, 12 damage that I can do. Right, there's the armoured warhorse, and he loses the joust. But I get some key information. He has a cruel taskmaster. This is quite interesting. Um, I therefore need to be aware of it for the future, uh, and I need to try and um, think to myself, well, if he was to draw into it, how could he use it, and in, in what context? So, Fiery War Axe. Um, this is what I was scared of. Warriors with weapons get to clear the board, and that is quite dangerous. Um, so, Cult Master to draw one card. I'm okay with that, you know. I'm fine with that. And we'll just play the Infiltrator. So, one card is fine. We're sort of even on cards. He has four. I have four. I have Unleashed the Hounds, and maybe that's going to be my secret weapon to win this game. Maybe. Um, Lost Tall Strider is a beast. It's fine, I guess. Um... Scavenging Hyenas would be pretty good here with Unleash and Web Spinner too, actually. Yeah, Hyenas would be really good. So there's the Death Spike. We've already seen a, a Fiery War Axe or a, a Fiery Win Axe, as it's usually called. And uh, there's a Death Spike. The, uh, the Death Spike, not good news at all for me because here's the problem. If you look at my hand, whatever I play is going to get taken out. If I play the Belcher, it's going to die. Um to the Death Spite, uh, to the uh, the Whirlwind effect. So I'm going to play a Web Spinner because if it dies, I'm actually fine with it because it gives a beast back to my hand and I think that's quite a heads up play. Um, but he, he slowed me down. He slowed me down here. I couldn't unload on the board. And he plays the Cavalier Raider and that's um, pretty bad because yeah, Inspire effect, it's now 6-6. Six, six. Um, I, I could contest it with the ogre, um, which is one strategy, but I'm afraid, I'm scared that he'll just find a way to kill the ogre, even though, well actually he would kill the ogre because he'd hero power, the raider becomes an 8-8, he would actually kill the ogre. Um, I was just thinking for a minute that the ogre would survive on one health, but no, the raider, raider goes up from a 6-6 to an 8-8, so the 7 health ogre is contested. So here's my strategy. Flood the board with two minions. Yes, it's not a flood, but get multiple things out onto the board to contest what's out there, and then figure out a way to deal with that raider if the warrior makes a trade. So if he kills the chicken off, 
I can trade with the Imani Berserker um, and unleash the Hounds. Um, he's not going to kill with chickens, he's going to kill the Berserker and he's going to hero power. And he thinks he's safe. He thinks that I can't kill an 8-6 Raiden. He thinks I won't tank the 8 damage to the face with my weapon. Um, he thinks I won't do it. And uh, do you know what? I'm not going to tank 8 damage to the face. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to unleash the hounds. And here comes Hyena value. Scavenging Hyena value. This is, this is, this is what we live for in her stone. There we go. And now we have an 8-5 hyena on board. And I'm saying to the warrior, deal with that. Yes, I gave him lots of armor, but I don't care. Actually, maybe I do care. What's he doing? No. It's fine. It's fine. Um, that's all he had. He's at 29 health. But look, my, my hyena is growing. Um, I don't care because the hyena at 10 attack is going to eat through 29 health over two to three turns. Um, if I interweave my hero power in as well, that's going to help. But the belcher will protect the hyena. Do you know, if I want to buff up the hyena even more, I can kill off my haunted creeper. But do I want to... Uh, he, uh, he sees the light. He sees the light. Here we go. Here we go. Alright, so, heading into our next game. Rexa versus Gul'dan. Okay, it's a warlock. Your soul shall be mine. Let the hunt begin. Greetings, traveler. He plays the flame imp. Hmm. <laughs> I will contest his flame imp with an Amani Berserker. What I'm scared of here is something like Dark Bomb. Um, he's going to trade. I'm surprised at that. Um, I was thinking if he was an aggressive warlock that he'd have just gone face and made me trade. Hmm. What's he scared of? Uh, Interesting. Um, okay. Do you know what I'm hoping for here? I'm hoping that the Mech Warper survives, that he trades into the uh, the web spinner, so I can use the Metal Tooth Leaper next turn at two cost. Is he gonna... I oh, know. He's a very cautious warlock. This is really interesting. And now the... Um, the, the the bear is a bit of a problem. Do I play the hyena? But if I play the hyena, the bear will just kill it. Even if I buff the hyena with a web spinner trade. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So. <clears throat> okay. Um, do I just trade the web spinner in anyway? No, I'm going to pass. I'm just going to um, I'm going to let him make the trades. Let's see what he does. I'm curious. I'm really curious here. Well, will he go face? Oh my. Fell Reaver. Now, this is fascinating. Fell Reaver. A lot of pros, they swear by this card. They love this card. Um, they talk about how many victories Fel Reaver gets them in arena. But here's my strategy. 
we're going to mill him. And by milling, what we mean is get him to burn all his cards. Let's, let's put the spinner in. Oh, Malorn. Hello. Hey, give me a minute. That's pretty good. Okay. So now uh, we've got three mana. We're going to play two cards. See the strategy here. Burn his cards. Burn his cards. Burn those cards. And now I'm saying to him, you have a choice. Either you trade with my board or you go face. What are you going to do? And I'm going to trade in the, uh, the board. I'm scared of my control tech um, and I want to buff up the hyena in case he makes the trade um, to do max damage to the Fog Reaver. Ooh, soul fight. That's pretty good. Okay, he, he discarded the, uh, uh, he probably discarded a card that he, um, you know, that he didn't really want to, didn't really want to discard there. Uh, Imp Gang Boss is a, is a really, really, really good card. Um, and this is, this is the trouble with playing cards like Soulfire and Fell Reaver. You're discarding cards that you want to keep usually. Uh, and that's why I don't like picking Fell Reaver. And it's really why I don't like picking cards like Soulfire. Um, I think they're counterproductive. Um, okay, how do I get rid of that Fell Reaver? This, this is the question now. Um, or do I want to get rid of it? <clears throat> you start to do calculations down. You think to yourself, can I tank eight to the face for two turns more? Um, eight times two, um, bit of maths here. Eight times two is 16. Mm -hmm. 10, yeah, 16. Can I tank it over two turns? Yes, I can. Can I tank it over three turns? No, I can't. <clears throat> so I either have to win in three turns or get rid of his Fell Reaver before he can hit me three times with it. <laughs> Got rid of some good cards there. Um, Soulfire could have could have been used as burn to kill me on the, in the face. Uh, Dread Infernal, really good card to get rid of. But here's a Sludge Belcher. I am fascinated by this deck. And I'd love to discuss the drafting process with this Warlock. I really would. Because he's got all of these methods for protecting his Fell Reaver, uh, like the Sludge Belcher, uh, the Soulfire, which does the four instant damage. It's quite interesting. So <clears throat> what do I do here? I I'm nearly dead. I'm nearly dead. So how do I go about regaining the board? I'm debating a trade with the ogre. Um, okay. And let's play. Um, let's play more stuff. Now I'm going with two cards here, rather than Malorn, because I want to mill him. Um, I see that as my only hope of survival in this game. That if he can't kill me on this next turn. Um, I have a good chance of winning. I have a good chance of winning if he can't kill me. He's going face though. What does he have? What does he have? Oh, more. He's drawing a card. Wow. That is. That's really interesting. Okay. This is a. This is a very tense game. This because now you said, look at the state of play and what does he have? There's another Imp Gank boss. Um, so his deck is, is super high quality, um, but he can't kill me. He has no direct damage. Okay, so now <clears throat> I have Malorn, but is that too slow? I think what I need is Scavenging Hyena and Kill Command. I think that's what I need here to clear the board. Um, thank God for the Kill Command, really. Because otherwise, this game would be over. Because now I can clear the entire board. Um, so at three health, I'm about to survive um, by... And I'm just figuring out the best way to do this. Well, I want the ogre to live because that's my damage source to his face. So I'm going to use expendable minions there to clear the Fell Reaver. Trade the ogre into the imp gang and draw a card. Now, maybe I shouldn't have hero powered. Uh, I should have waited to draw the card, then hero power if I feel it's necessary. 
Fits in Team Guard. Um, not enough because Malorn has returned. And we have a, uh, a freezing trap. So, here we go. What's that last card? If that last card is three damage to my face, the Warlock wins. But the freezing trap is in play and... Um, the hunter becomes the hunter. The hunter becomes the hunter. It's Neferian. Um, now, he's got zero mana though. So what can he cast? What hunter spells can he cast for zero mana that do three damage to my face? I don't think there are any. Um, so thank God for the freezing trap. Uh, thank God for the kill command. I drew those things into my hand when I needed them. Uh, or was able to save them up for when I needed them. And it's paid off in spades. Um... Tremendous game this, an absolutely tremendous game. A lot of respect for this Warlock because playing Fel Reaver is such a uh, such a challenging task in Arena, it really is. It's very rewarding, but in situations like this, when it doesn't work out, it leads to a, uh, a loss. So yeah, well played, really, no, well played for him. He, he did a tremendous job, generally, and um, it was a fun game, a really fun game. That had to be one of my most fun arena games that I've ever, ever played, um, really. So, Fel Reaver and Nefarian. Wow. Um, tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. So, heading, heading, into, um, heading into the next game now. Um, Game number seven. So we're six and one. We're doing pretty well. And um, <clears throat> now we're sort of fighting for... Uh... Rexa versus Gera. Oh, okay. Victory or death. Let the hunt begin. So it's another warrior. Um, in this opening hand, do I keep the freezing trap or not? I'm definitely keeping the bow. It's a, a board control mechanic, that bow. It, it helps me maintain a presence, or rather helps me clear the enemy minions. Uh, I'm not going to keep the freezing trap, but I want a minion I can play early. I was rewarded. I got the sludge belcher. Um, so, sorry, what am I talking about? The worgen infiltrator. No, what am I talking about? Uh, yeah, I got the worgen. Good turn one play. <clears throat> So, we're playing the Metal Tooth Leaper for the body there. Um, I could have coined out the bow. I don't want to show him that I have a bow yet. I want to keep it hidden. So, I saw him target my minion there. He's got a spell. Oh, yeah, okay. Heroic Strike. Um, okay, yeah, sure. Why not? Whatever. Whatever. Um, bit of a slow play there for me playing a web spinner and a hero power. But the hero power is two damage, and two damage is, is two damage. You know, it's something that is, is still very much worthwhile. But not when you're faced up, facing up against a Yeti. Uh, a 4-5 Yeti is, is very difficult to remove. So I'm going to go with a play that I made before. I'm just going to play a Cult Master and draw one card. <clears throat> I used this play in an earlier game, and... Um, um, and I know the Cult Master is probably going to die to the Yeti, unless he's got another way of clearing it, and he does. I wasn't expecting that. Um, and I wasn't expecting that either. So, Spiral Partner is Taunt City now. Um, I've got to start clearing with the bow. I have no choice. If I don't, I run the risk of just being kicked out of this game and naturally I don't win the joust. Why would I win the joust? I never win jousts. Um, yeah. So anyway, there's the bow. We'll clear what we can and it feels really, really bad but we may have to, to sort of double trade into the Yeti. Yeah, he's clearing. Um, and, oh, he's trading, sorry. Uh, and now I may have to trade in. I was hoping for Unleash the Hounds, and I didn't get it. Uh, so it makes me really sad, unf 
unfortunately. Um, but ball of spiders, do your thing. Um, I'm, I am, I am setting up for a scavenging hyena uh, value festival. That's what I'm setting up for. If he's smart, he may make the connection. Out of all of the cards in my hand, why did I play Ball of Spiders and, uh, yeah, my dreams have been crushed. My dreams have been crushed. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Um, and I made a, uh, I made a misplay here. Ah, uh, I've misplayed, yeah. I, do you know, I'm so used to using that card in Druid Arena, and I'm so used to it giving me plus three attack, and I was gonna trade into the Spectral Knight with plus three hero power attack, or hero attack, sorry. But I realized with Druid, it's because the Druid can use its hero power to generate one attack and then use the 5-4 to generate two attack, making it three. Um, and I thought I could trade uh, into the Spectral Knight with three attack from the hero, plus one from the, the, the charging ball, but actually no, it's uh, only plus two attack because I'm not a druid and I don't have a hero power that generates one attack. I hope that made sense. I misplayed. Um, at least he traded though, and um, now I have a taunt. And, um... Yeah, the chicken, I think, is decent. Uh, or we could go with Wind Fury. But no, I, I think playing the chicken is fine because... Do you know what? He may kill the taunt, and then he may not kill the chicken. And if he doesn't kill the chicken, I will trade the chicken into something and get double scavenging hyena value. Do you see the dream? It's, oh dear. You see the dream is still alive, getting hyena value in this game. He's sort of preventing that from happening. And um, Mookla's champion, yeah, he is preventing that from happening. Mookla's champion to the rescue there means his, um, his yeti lives. However, the sniper helps me here. And um, I'm able to now get board presence. Ready, sir. I'm not going to call it board control because I'm nearly dead. And I'm even more nearly dead. Moga Moga kill. So, Moga. Oh, okay. Well, this is interesting. Say goodbye to your legendary. Uh, deadly shot. That's why we drafted deadly shot. That's the only reason we drafted deadly shot. To take out big annoying minions. Right. He can see his house from there. Um, and there we go. We're, we are now setting up for scavenging hyena value. Because um, that beast, the one two, will die. And we will get hyena value. We have to get hyena value. Shall we put a kink in their plans? Do we win yet? <laughs> do we win yet? He's got eight attack on board. What do I have? Four attack, Glaive Zooka, Hero Power, which I can't cast. Um, yeah, we're in a bit of trouble. <clears throat> we're in a bit of trouble here. So. I can trade the, I mean, I, I, I can, well, no, I can't cast my hero power. I will have to trade the 3-2 into the 4-3. Um, but um, there are no easy, there are no easy decisions here. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I can play every card in my hand and maybe that's what I have to do. Or do I? Is, is that really what I want to do? Does Glaive Zooka actually do anything here? Does it really? It doesn't. Because even with the plus one attack buff, I can't kill the Spiteful Smith. So let's draw a card. Ooh, Charging Horsey. Now, this is a bit more interesting and I'm running out of time. Um, so you need to think quick. Double Hyena. Glaive Zooka. 
But what do I kill? What do I kill? I can kill the... Yeah, I can kill the smith. And I ran out of time. I was going to buff the hyenas. Um, yeah, my bad. Oh dear. Interesting. He values keeping... Yeah, so uh, I'm surprised. Yeah, he values not buffing up the hyenas, so he's ignoring the beasts. But that's a mistake, because now, look, hyena value. We accomplished what we set out to do, and he gives up. Did I have lethal, though? I, I don't actually think I had lethal, but no. He, 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 he saw the writing on the wall. And there we are, we're 6-1. We're 6-1 with this deck so far. Uh, sorry, I, I, I think previously I said we were 6-1. Previously we were actually 5-1. This game now makes us 6-1. Uh, it's pretty good going. Pretty good going. So we're heading into game number eight. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is going a bit here. Um, okay. So we're going up against a shaman. Now, we're going to get rid of everything apart from the raider. Because the raider is a two-drop. And do you know what? That's a really good hand. Why? Because I've got a coin into a two drop, into another two drop. Huh. Into another two drop plus a one drop for turn three. So yeah, not bad. I'm going to play the sniper here purely because I value the blood cell raider to go with the glaive zooka. Um, or sorry, to play the Raider after the Glaive Zooka because of the synergy. Um, maybe that was a mistake because of Lightning Bolt. See, I was, I was just expecting him to play a Totem on turn two. That's what they usually do. And then I just sniped it down. Um, anyway, so we're going to play the Hyena. Uh, why? Because I value the Blood Cell Raider to combo with the Glaive Zooka. Plus... I can play the boar here. I can charge the boar into the loot hoarder. This has worked out very well for me. Very, very well. So once again, hyena synergy with beasts. <clears throat> and now he's facing off against a 4-3 and a 2-3 that enrages when it's, uh, when it's hit. So did you bring some fish? Didn't work out so well for him there. Um, didn't really work out well for him. So now we use the Glaive Zooka. And the Blood Cell Raider. X marks the spot. And look at that board. I am not going to leave that totem up alive. I'm going to kill it. So, so far, 10, 14, 15, 16, 17, 8, 18 damage. 18 damage is what we have on turn five. How crazy is that? 18 damage on turn five. Incredible. Okay, but we're going to clear because um, it's a shaman and shamans can do shaman things. Um, see, what I'm fearing here is I'm fearing lightning storm. So I'm going to make the trade because if he has lightning storm, and he eliminates most of my board, then, um, well, I'm only left with the Spectral Knight, which he can then kill by trading. And that's it, turn five. Wow, my turn five led to that win. That's incredible, incredible value there. Wow, what a, what a deck. So I've just got a friend there, spectating. Um, so uh, a, a shout out there to Lant. I think that's how we pronounce your name. Uh, this is a friend of mine who um, is following me on YouTube and does watch my videos. And um, yeah, you know, he does spectate. Lant does spectate my games um, from time to time. And so yeah, big shout out to Lant. Um, Rexa. 
versus Jaina. Okay, so you asked for Mage. Let the hunt begin. Now, we are we're heading into interesting territory where we have a really good opening hand, tremendous opening hand. Um, but as I'm saying there to Lance, I'm saying this deck struggles to beat mages because um, I lost to a mage earlier and Flame Strike was sort of a key contributing factor to me losing. And I don't feel this deck, I mean, this deck can, can be, as you saw in the last game, it can be quite aggressive. But most of those minions I played in that last game that enabled my aggression would have died to Flame Strike. So I'm really scared of Flame Strike, and um, we've got some interesting decisions to make in this game. Some very interesting decisions to make. Um, and the decision here was scavenging Hyena because, well, he has to make a decision over which beast to kill and I was not expecting him to have that. I was not expecting him to have arcane missiles and that's ruined my day because now I'm thinking I'm safe because, oh no, he has the coin and there he's going to kill the Hyena. So this situation is bad. It should have been a good situation because I was going to charge bore and the web spinner into a minion and get hu double hyena value clearly he didn't play a minion he wants to get rid of the hyena he succeeded but we're still gonna go nuts on the board anyway and set up the steam wheel sniper because hopefully he plays something we can snipe um, but he may use this turn to a hero power no he has a frostbolt hey it's a mage doing mage things So, is that his entire turn? If it is, I guess I'm happy. I guess I'm happy. Well, I'm not happy, but I guess I'm okay with it. Okay, so a tempo abusive sergeant. Ah, uh, that's all right. Uh, let's trade first with the web spinner. Let's see what we get. Ooh, captured your monger. Hey. That survives Flame Strike. And do you know what? What I'm going to play next turn is probably the Spectral Knight. That survives Flame Strike too. Wow! Tempo Sun Fury Protector! Wow. Do you know? Forcing him to ping has serious advantages. It means by playing these one health minions, he feels compelled to ping. And he can't play much else on that turn. There's the Sludge Belcher. Now, you see, if he has Blizzard for turn six, my evil Heckler dies. So I'm gonna trade it, because it dies anyway to, to AoE. But the Spectral Knight does not die to AoE. Flame Strike does four damage, okay? He can do full damage with Flame Strike on turn 7, but he can't ping the Spectral. That is why Spectral Knight, one of the best cards, one of the best cards to draw against a mage. However, this is a problem. The full 7 will buff his Flame Strike to 5 damage. That will clear my board. That will clear my board. Is he telling me he has a Flame Strike? Do I need to clear the full seven? But hey, if I clear the full seven, I've got to trade everything in. I've got to trade everything in. Yeah, the spectral survives, but everything else dies. Uh, Lant there says, yeah, we're setting up for a flame strike. Um, here is where you gamble as a player. I could play the captured Jawmonger and trade everything in and have a one health Spectral Knight and a, uh, a full health Jawmonger. Alternatively, this is the play I'm going to make. Freezing Trap and fill the board. And look, he said thank you. He's saying he has a Flame Strike. He's telling me he has a Flame Strike. Do you have a Flame Strike? And I'm saying to Lance, yeah, I think he has it, because do you have it? No, you don't. Or if you did, you should not have attacked first Squire, attend me. into the trap. Ready, sir. He doesn't have it. 
He was bluffing. What a bluff. Major respect to my opponent, whose name is Epic Turtle there. Major respect because uh, he bluffed and I almost fell for the bluff. I almost fell for it. And we are 8-1. We are 8-1 and this is tremendous. So, you, I, you know, I can't describe to you in words the feeling. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's a tremendous feeling, it really is. I will fight with honor. Let the hunt begin. Right, paladin time. Let the hunt begin. A bit scared of paladins. If you've watched my previous videos, you'll know how much I respect paladins and mages in arena because they are classes which have access to tremendous cards, uh, class cards that are very difficult to um, very difficult to, 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 to beat, really. Um, Alright, let's coin out the Mech Warper. Why not? Uh, Metal Tooth Leaper there would have been tremendous because I could have played it on turn two. Uh, so yeah, it was, it's not so great, I guess. Um, if memory serves correct, I believe Metal Tooth Leaper is the only thing, the only mech, sorry, that I have on my deck that goes with the Mech Warper. Um, so anyway, uh, Glaive Zuka. Pretty good. And if that's his only response, I'm very happy. So the Paladin playing a slow game here. I'm happy to play a fast game, but no, I'm not. I'm going to trade. <laughs> you see, most people would have used the, uh, the, the weapon there to trade, uh, to kill the, uh, the Silverhand recruit. I value the weapon charge, so I'm going to hold, I, I held back on the weapon and I used the Met Warper. Unfortunately for me though, I was hoping to go Wind Fury on this turn, but he used his weapon there. Uh, it's a Paladin. Hey, it's turn four. Of course, he's going to have a true silver champion. Well, I mean, what more do we expect from Paladins? So anyway, um, Kill Command and Scavenging Hyena are an interesting combination that I can play when I need it. So good to keep it in hand, okay? Good to keep it in hand. Um, in this situation, he's once again summoned a Silverhand Recruit. He, he loves doing that. I mean, come on, you've got a card full of... Uh, sorry, a hand full of cards. A card full of hands? Hand full of cards. Um, okay, so he's going for the Sun Fury. Not the Sun Fury. Gosh. Shattered Sun Cleric. I do apologise for my uh, my errors here. Uh, it is quite late. It's, uh, it's midnight, actually, nearly, um, um, with me producing the commentary for this video. So it is quite late. Uh, I do apologise. So anyway, um, I could just trade. <coughs> Sorry, my cold is uh, flaring up again. I could just trade. Um, the mech warper in and use the weapon. Alternatively, I could save the mech warper, trade with the weapon and use deadly shots. But no, spectral knight is better. I need to save deadly shot for something that's deadly, for something that's really deadly. And um, I'm expecting him to trade his 2-2 into my 3-2. I didn't make the trade because I want to be aggressive. Because it's a Paladin at 20 health. I need to burst him down. Lance Carrier. Lance Carrier and what? What are you going to... Uh... What are you going to group the Lance Carrier with there? So you've, you've Lance Carriered your Silverhand Recruit, Abusive Sergeant, Death Lord, unbelievable. So I should have cleared the board. That was my mistake because now I've lost my Spectral Knight. That's, uh, that's pretty bad. So being aggressive there didn't pay off 
it was a bad decision on my part but how do you um how do you prepare how do you uh you know it, sort of plan for a lance carrier and an abusive sergeant and a death lord all on the same turn that's unbelievable anywho discussing with um lance there do i go with the deadly shot it's a 33 percent chance oh look there's the metal tooth leaper there's the mech synergy or oh, or oh, oh, what little mech synergy i have Oh wow, the Death Lord gives me the Charging Horsey. Um, that's the drawback of Death Lord. Uh, you lose games on the Death Rattle when it gives your opponent some ridiculously strong minion from their deck. Now, the Charging Horse there isn't ridiculously strong, it's just fantastic utility. Concentration is also fantastic utility for him. But can't help but feel it was wasted on two minions there, plus a trade. I feel that I have the advantage. If all he's playing is those two minions on board, I feel I have an advantage here. Um, like a I've seen a weapon. I've seen a consecration. I think I'm okay here. Unless there's another weapon to kill off my taunt. I think I'm in a good position. I want to save Deadly Shot and I want to save the chicken. Uh, Seal of Champions, this Paladin is playing everything that Paladins play. Weapons, Consecration, Seal of Champions. Do you know what? The only thing missing is the Murloc Knight, which is the other amazing Paladin class card that gets used in arenas. Uh, will we see the Murloc Knight? If only because it's a fun card and I like the sound effects and I like to see what Murlocs get summoned. Um, but, but anyway, anyway. Um, how do I deal with the board? Uh, this is the question. I mean, do I, do I, I guess what I need to do is get some value here for the trades. I'm not in danger of dying, my health total is respectable, and I feel I have advantage in hand in terms of cards. So trading this, the Hyena into the 1-1 one, one is a safe bet to begin with. And then Deadly Shot, okay that's fine, it kills something. And then we play the chicken. Now what I'm saying to him here is, you've got to kill the Scavenging Hyena, get the value trade. But I'm okay with that because if you do that, I'll use the Kraken on the remainder of the um, of the Yeti. So that's my play. Your magic shall not that's a good play if he plans on killing the chicken. No, he wants the value trade. He left the lost horse strider alone. He left the chicken alone. He he wants value. Um, I don't blame him because he must feel pretty secure in his health total too. Um, Okay, what do we do here? Well, we have to play uh, the Kraken. Playing the Raider and the Boar is weak. Weak on that board, and I think it would lose me the game. So we have to play the Kraken, but here's the decision. What do we, uh, what do we kill with the Kraken? Using the four burst damage, the battle cry, what minion do we kill? Well... It has to be one of the four three attack minions, uh, one of the four attack minions, um, because they're representing the biggest threat to my health total, I think. I think that's the logical way to think about it. Um, <clears throat> and I don't think it matters in particular which one we kill, uh, unless, you know, I don't know, uh, unless he has a brewmaster. I'm going to kill the Yeti, because if he has an Earthen Ring Farseer, he could heal the Yeti up for three, and that could be a slight disaster. Okay, well, we're gonna go with the value trade two. Um, so yeah, I'm expecting him to use his silver hand recruit, and now I'm expecting him to trade. Reporting for duty. And he does face, and uh, it's game over. He's just lost this game because he went face. If he'd traded, he could have killed the Kraken maybe on the next turn with something, uh, but no, he went face, and as a result, I win, unless he can kill me on this turn, and Paladins, Paladins don't do huge amounts of burst damage like Mages or Rogues, so 
Ah, there's a chance for survival. Sunwalker. Um, best taunt minion in the game, bar none. I, I think it trumps the Sludge Belcher because it's a 4-5. That 4 attack actually counts for so much. Plus the Divine Shield is a, a major plus point. So here's what he's going to try and do. Uh, he's, he's, he's contemplating a trade there um, with the Harvest Golem. Uh, into the Kraken, because he wants to kill the Kraken as quickly as possible. But that card just won't be the game. And if you notice, I trade one Hound into the shield, so that pops the shield first. And I have precisely enough damage, I had to count it twice, three, four, five, and face. And there we go. That's how we beat the power difference. I was very lucky there. You could argue I had no right winning that in the sense that he, he, he unloaded with his amazing cards. Um, but Unleash the Hounds saves the day. Those top decks um, were, were tremendous, really. Uh, and as Lance says, uh, top deck pro skill. Tremendous stuff. Okay, so yeah, done pretty well. Rexa versus so Rexa. game number eleven. Let the hunt begin. Let the hunt begin. Hunt We're going up against a hunter, and uh, you know, usually you don't see many hunters at this level at this point in an arena run. You know, we are game number. We're, we're, we're eleven games in. It's rare, it really is. So it must mean that his deck is pretty good um, and that he must have decent class cards. You see, in this deck, one thing that I didn't have was a Savannah High Main, and that is always something you wish for. Um, Houndmaster, I don't have any Houndmasters, and I've, I have beasts, but no Houndmasters. So the fact that this deck has managed to travel this far into the arena run is, is, is tremendous, it really is, um, because it lacks a lot of those other sort of late game hunter class cards, the, you know, the high mains and so on. Um, what, what it, where this deck has shined though is the scavenging hyenas. Um, I've managed to get value out of them. Glaive Zooka has shined so far in this deck. Eaglehorn Bow has sort of shined. I've, I've managed to get value. So I'm really happy. Instead of getting value in the late game, where I've often uh, had that value in my previous arenas, I've managed to get value in this uh, early game, in this arena run. Now here's a Kodo Rider. I need to store that information for later because the Kodo Rider, in my opinion, is one of the best cards in arena. It's a very slow card, but if it gets onto the board and it can't be killed, he will flood the board with Kodos by using the Inspire effect. And I can't deal, I won't be able to deal with that, I don't think. So I need to be aggressive, I need to end this game quickly. I'm presuming he has lots of late game value, so <clears throat> that's that's what the Kodo Rider read is, is telling me there. So I, I don't want to give him an opportunity to be able to play it. So let's keep the pressure on. Dancing Swords is a tremendously good response to my um, my board. So well done to him for playing that card because it can test both minions. He can get a double trade, um, but I won't let him. I'm going to force him to have something that will kill my 5-4. Uh, the only thing I can think of is a kill command with a beast on board. Uh, so one, a web spinner KC. Uh, and then he can use the Dancing Swords to kill off one of my other minions. Oh, that will do it. So Animal Companion, Huffer. But I'm happy about that because Huffer was used there for a trade. You never want to use Huffer for trades. You always want to go face with Huffer. So I'm happy with that. But look at what he's done. He's actually cleared my board. And uh, this is the second time we see a Hunter using Arcane Shot in this arena run. Remember, I was offered that in my draft and I, I declined to take it. But as you can see, there it got him tremendous value he was able to clear the board thankfully though I drafted Spectral Knight and look at the value that Spectral Knight is going to get me 
It's going to let me kill his 4-2. <coughs> Sorry. Cold. Bad throat. Sore throat. Um, <clears throat> but, it, so let me kill the 4-2, and he may have to use the 5-5 the five, five tiger to kill it off. But I've got a better idea, potentially, here, and I'm contemplating this. I could use the Steam Weedle Sniper and the Hero Power to take out the uh, the Dancing Swords there. Um, that's one option. You see there are so many options here. Um, so many options. And I'm actually going to go with Silver Hand Knight and a trade. What's my reasoning for doing that? The reasoning is simple. Bodies on the board. I need to get things out on the board. Um, that's my feeling here. And Silverhand Knight is a, a, a tremendously great card, so value orientated, because it gives you two bodies. And sometimes just having more bodies on the board is good, just because of trading and, and whatnot. He seems uh, confused there. No, he wasn't. He was deciding what to target. Um, and yeah, he freezes the 4-4. <coughs> And he goes face. Do you know what? I'm really surprised he went face there. I'm super duper surprised. I was expecting a trade, at least into the 2-2, to get a 2-for-1 with the Tiger. I'm really surprised. Can I punish him? Yes, I can. <clears throat> I have Scavenging Hyena, and I have KC, Kill Command. I've just got to decide which thing to kill command, and you kill command the beast, so you don't give your opponent uh, kill command synergy. And look at this board flood here. This is the very definition of a board flood. I know I use that term a lot, and in earlier games I'd put two minions on board and call it a board flood. This is a board flood. Um, and uh, what am I scared of here? I'm scared of Unleash the Hounds, but I don't know. What are the chances he's got it? And even if he does have it, how much will it do? He'll have to throw those hounds into, into the minions, um, and he won't be able to kill off all of them. Arcane Golem gives me a mana, uh, a mana crystal, um, which is tremendous, actually. Was every bit of mana counts. And you could tell he, he was probably, he thought about that play a lot. And I don't think he was happy with it. There's Unleash. He wasn't happy because Arcane Golem is really supposed to be a finisher. Um, and certainly before turn 10, you don't want to give your, your opponent more mana crystals because they can do more with it. You know, like here, I can fit Unleash in with the Boulder Fist Ogre. Um, and that combo is is, is 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 it's a huge huge combo from a damage standpoint you know the ogre's got six the hounds will have one each for each opponent's minion on the board um, he gave me that mana crystal um but that's fine yeah that's fine um he felt he had no other choice, so it's okay. I respect that play. Uh, but here comes the Ogre. There was an option to use the Sniper there to take out the Shredder and trade a Hound in. But I'm going to go face, and here's why. I don't feel threatened anymore. I'm at 21 health. You, he can't. It's actually impossible to kill me. It's turn 8, so he can't play Deathwing. But that's turn 10, if he has it. Um, I don't see how he wins. I don't see one card or even a combo of two cards in his hand that could uh, that could win him the game here. I mean, something like Unleash Double KC. Uh, no, you can't even do that. But that's nine mana. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Yeah. Let's get There's the Kodo Rider. There's the card we were talking about earlier. And now look at this effect. He, he gains a Kodo, um, another Kodo on the board. Can you imagine if he had board control and he just spent every turn hero powering, gaining a Kodo? Um, 
And that's why I said I had to burst him down before we got to that point. When we saw that podo in the joust, I said, well, we've got to we've got to kill him before that Kodo becomes an issue. And we managed to do it. We managed to do it. I think by the time this uh, this commentary is over, I think I'll have lost my voice completely. <coughs> you can hear it going again. Um, um, but it'll be worth it, you know. It'll be worth it. Happy to do anything for my uh, my YouTube subscribers or my viewers on my videos. Happy to do anything for them. Even if it means losing my voice. Um, okay, let's look at my hand here. <clears throat> now, um, Argent Squire. Very annoying. Very annoying. Because it has Divine Shield. And quite often you'll see players investing a lot to pop that Divine Shield. So in that, and so often it involves two trades with the squire, and if that is achieved, the squire has done its job. Um, once again, I'm valuing the blood cell raider synergy with the uh, with the glaive zuka. I think other players would disagree and would probably say, "Well, no, play the uh, raider first, because if it dies, you've not lost a huge amount." and you save the Sniper for a more valuable turn. But I actually value the Raider with the Zooka because the glaive Zooka blood cell combo has helped me win games in this series already. Um, and just getting that, that plus attack on the Raider for two, for, it was, it's a two cost card, remember? So getting the, the plus attack on it is so, so valuable. Um, all right, really trying to contemplate here what to do. Um, that four four is super annoying. But let's let's not forget the four four will not always hit the intended target. Ogres are stupid after all. Um, so there's a fifty percent chance it misses and hits the wrong target. So let's keep that in mind, okay? But then, do we just want to kill that ogre? Do we still do we still see it as a threat? No. We're gonna kill the uh, the Argent Squire. I want to get I, I, I want to get rid of that Divine Shield. Divine Shield scare me. I'm scared of Blood Knight, especially at this level of arena, at this number of wins, this far into a run. Wouldn't surprise me if he's got cards like Blood Knight, and that is a card, Coghammer. That is the card I did not want to see. Um, that's a game-winning card. Um, for a paladin, it really is. It, look at that. He has a four-four with divine shield. How do I beat that? How do I get through it? It's, it's very difficult. And I applaud him for having that and 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 executing these plays in such a way that that four-four ended up with divine shield. That is tremendously uh, uh, valuable for him. Um, you see, if I play Glaive Zuka here, and it buffs up. The, the horse, that is not enough to kill the 4-4 because of that shield. So <clears throat> I'm sort of stuck in limbo here. I, 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 I don't really have plays that are tremendously valuable uh, or useful, I should say, in this situation. And uh, okay, so we're heading into the rope uh, here. Um, Glaive Zuka will come down. I, I, um, I, I think we value having that weapon. Even if we have to hit him twice to that 4-1, uh, we're going to do it. But there's a hope that when he attacks with the 4-1, the infiltrator will absorb the attack. I say a hope because, to be frank, I don't want to tank another 4 damage to the face. Although, maybe that's what I need to do. Uh, I know. I do. What do I value here? My face... Or the infiltrator. Actually, I value the minion more than my face. I wonder. Um, if this was another hunter, I would value my face more because hunters are more aggressive than paladins in general. Uh, but no, the ogre, he was stupid. He killed the infiltrator. But it's okay. It's okay. Um, because look, Blood Cell Raider gets value now. And um, <clears throat> I'm actually going to make a very controversial play here. 
I, I, I value the Raiders for attacks so much that I'm actually going to KC the 3 4 and absorb 3 to the face. Yeah, that earlier debate of, of do I value my health total or my minion more, which, you know, which one do we value? That is something that I think is fascinating and I, I think it's worthy of sort of further exploration and discussion in particular situations. Um, what do I value more? I, I, I think I didn't want to face tank that ogre again because it's for attack, you know, it's, it's quite significant. But then again, it's against a paladin. How, how, how did paladins burst you down? Um, paladin as a class is not known for tremendous burst damage. Mages are, rogues are, hunters are, but paladins aren't. So do I really care about my health total here? Yeah, that's the, that's the question. Anyway, his board, he has three attack on board, um, plus the weapon. And as you can see, it is not looking very good for me at the moment. Um, it's not looking... It's not looking good at all, because I'm scared of Consecration. Um, I'm scared of that card. Hammer of Wrath. Well, the acolyte did its job. It absorbed a three attack, uh, a three attack card, and he, you can tell he was desperate to play the mad bomber, but he didn't want to play it while there was a uh, an acolyte on board. So yeah, he had to clear the acolyte. So the acolyte did its job. It absorbed uh, some heavy duty sort of damage. It it absorbed his his hammer of wrath, and I'm really happy that it did. Um, I'm happy that the Acolyte absorbed it and that a card like, you know, the Evil Heckler um, or the Sludge Belcher, that they didn't have to absorb it. Now, notice what I did there. I, I didn't play the Sludge Belcher. I could have, but I didn't. Because I value the Belcher more than the Heckler. Because if I play the Belcher, it dies to the weapon and the bomber. Here, I'm happy for the Heckler to die to the bomber and the weapon. But with the Belcher, I want to save it. For, for, for a more interesting situation where I know it won't die so easily. Um, unfortunately, I just have to play it here. I just have to play it because I've got nothing else really to do. Uh, Multi-shot will not kill the Heckler, so I've just got to play the Belcher after all. Um, and, and that's a card, again, I did not want to see. Mookla's Champion buffs up his cards. Here's a consideration. Should I have attacked? With my with my heckler on that last turn and killed his heckler, because by not attacking, I've sort of been punished here by Mookla's champion. Um, because yeah, I've been punished because his heckler. Well, yeah, it's a six-two, uh, and that represents a lot of damage. Using the kraken there to clear the heckler and not Mookla's champion. Because I'm scared of the damage, I'm, I'm, I'm scared of the taunt, and I'm scared of that damage. Um, was that the right play? I don't know. I mean, it, it's the difference between having... Well, no, actually, there isn't a difference, because... What? Ragnaros. Wow. Yeah, it, I should have killed Mookla's champion. Because now, Mookla's champion is alive, it's just going to keep buffing everything else up. And this is a loss. There's nothing I can do. Um, well yeah, well played to the Paladin there. Uh, well played to him. Inconceivable. Thank you. <laughs> That's it. Well fought. Yeah, that was tough. Well, you know, good plays, good plays by the Paladin, you know, good plays. Um, at this, at this level, at this point in, in the arena, when you go so far into a run, you've got to expect to come up against amazing decks. And even if I'd managed to somehow claw back that board, he had Ragnaros in his in his deck. Um, so what could I what can I do against that? I actually don't have anything significant in my deck that can deal with it. 
Anyway, going up against a mage here, and uh, web spinner will be kept, but we'll get rid of everything else. There is some argument to keeping freezing trap uh, and using it to control the board, but I'd rather use it later um, in the mid game if I can uh, to get value on bigger minions. But this is an incredibly strong opening combo here. We have web spinner and glaive zooka, uh, and that is very, very strong. Mana Ray. Huh. Who drafts that card? Should I just ignore it? And make his make his, his minions expensive? No. We'll use the Glaive Zooka for its intended purpose, really, in, in, in this situation. It's to clear a minion. Um. <clears throat> it's time for a little blood. Okay, he's got the Imani Berserker. He wants me to do a double trade. Um, into the uh, the Berserker. Um, what mood am I in? Am I in a trading mood? Or do I want to get value from the 2-1 the Web Spinner? Do you know what? If the Web Spinner was one attack, I'd probably do the double trade. I but it's two attack. Do I want to go face with that two attack? Is that, uh, is that something I want to pass up? So, need to think about this. Um, I think in the end, we'll just we'll play a three drop, and we'll go face. I'm going to force him to trade. What I'm expecting is a ping into the three three and a trade with the Imani Berserker. No, he plays a taunt and he trades that way, and that's fine because I've got multi shot. Um, And that's tremendous for me because my 3-3 stays alive. Uh, I maintain board control. I maintain some presence on the board. Yeah, sure, 3-3 isn't the most threatening minion, but it's board presence, you know. And yeah, we're okay. <clears throat> I still have the coin too. I need to figure out how best to use it actually to get value out of board play, play uh, value out of placing minions on board. So, once again, Silverhand Knight, sort of an MVP in this series of games, getting a board presence going for us, which is really important here. It's turn six. He can't flame strike me yet, but I'm expecting it on turn seven. But for now, let's put stuff on board and let's see what he does with the tiger. Because whatever happens. What to do? What Whatever happens, he's got to know that I'll be gunning for that tiger. Um, I was just saying there the to Lance that deadly shot would be so so good here, really would be. Um, deadly deadly shot would um, it allow me to clear the uh, the three one and then just kill off the tiger but no we don't have it so we need to make do um contemplating what to play here i wonder i can't target the tiger that's really annoying it's really bugging me so what i may do is just play the sludge belcher um yeah and clear the 3 1 mm. If you insist. Why am I playing the Belcher? Well, I'm expecting Flame Strike. And at the very least, the Belcher will absorb 5 damage from the Tiger. Okay. And it will put the Tiger, there it is, it'll put the Tiger down to uh, two health. So it'll trade nicely now with with, oh look, with the Steam Weedle Sniper. It's as if I planned it all along, yeah? 
And uh, yeah, the uh, the Wind Fury guy who can see his house from there. Um, that's a potential six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's a potential ten damage. Um, do you know what? He's nearly dead. And I'm at 25 health. I feel safe. What I'm scared of now is a second flame strike. You know, as a mage, you don't come this far in an arena run without having two, maybe three flame strikes. Um, maybe three is overkill, but maybe he's got two. But you know what they say about flame strikes? The first one is absolutely amazing. The second one, eh, not as valuable as the first. It gets less value. And the third may never see value. Um, but, okay, Flame Waker, this feels like constructed now. This feels like a constructed game. Um, this is what you see in Tempo Mage on the ladder. Um, he's used a fireball, though, on a minion. That is a fireball that did not go face. That makes me very happy. And finally, the bow gets value for me. And the coin gets value too. Just trying to decide what drops to play, which two drops to play. We're going to play the beasts. So if he plays something um, threatening, I can trade in the uh, the raptor, maybe use the bow too, and buff up the hyena. But I'm super, super scared of flame strike. Uh, again, flame strike number two. Um, these are game deciding plays here now as you head into this sort of late game stage, you know, turn nine for him. These are the plays that decide the outcome of the game. Um, and, and part of it is luck. You know, if he has a second flame strike, maybe he hasn't drawn into it. Arcane intellect, I'm okay with it because it's a slow play. Finally, a second chance. That's not a slow play. Shred is not a slow play. I was expecting him to use his hero power there to kill something, but he didn't. That fascinates me. But no, he, he values board presence, and the Shredder is just one of the best minions uh, full stop for board presence. It really is. Um, so now I've got to decide on the trades. I've, I've, I've got to decide on the trades here. It's time for a little blood. Okay. Steam Weedle Sniper. Um, doing a lot of work here in this run. Doing a tremendous amount of work in general. It's letting me gain board control. It's letting me gain board control and that's that's brilliant. We talked about these being game deciding turns and, and you know, Steam Weedle is, is one of those cards that lets you gain that control that's just so important. I wonder. You're in trouble now. Pit Fighter isn't gonna do it. Flame Lance, however. Wow. Well. Oh Beast Synergy. Oh uh yeah. I did. Oh, yeah. Okay. He, he didn't give me the satisfaction. Um, oh, and there we go. Eleven wins, and we're heading into that final game now. So we're eleven and two, and we're heading into this twelfth game now. Sorry, the, the, the game for the 12th win. Rexa versus Valir. And, no, I'm, I'm really surprised. I'm super surprised that this is a rogue we're facing off against. You'd expect a paladin, you'd expect a mage, but it's a rogue. Um, and that's really bad. That North Sea, uh, that Kraken, in my hand, it has no business being in my hand. The pleasure is mine. Huh. <laughs> it's time for a little blood. So, 
we value the uh, we value playing the Amani um, over the Mech Warper, just because if we could get Glaive Zuka synergy there, we could throw I don't know the Amani into a um, a two three uh, and buff it up after that trade. It'd still be alive, but it would have three attack. Um, but no, it's fine. It's fine. We, we didn't go with the Glaive Zooker option there. No, it's okay. So it's a rogue doing rogue things. Deadly poison. Absolutely fine. Well, no, it's not absolutely fine, but yeah, you get the drift. Um, playing the Eagle Horn Bow, though, on that last turn, I mean, it was on curve. So we're using our, man our mana, uh, you know, uh, efficiently as well there. Um, we valued keeping our Amani Berserker healthy, um, but clearly he had the deadly poison, so it, this is of course the proof that weapons in Arena are so valuable, um, or weapon buff effects for the, the Rogue's case are so valuable, because they're just maintaining control of the board. Now, in this situation, um, he does have board control, because he has a 3-2. Plus, he has another buff on his weapon. Um, it's easy to see how this rogue has come so far. Um, he's, he's got deadly poison. He's got um, the auto barber there. It's easy to see how he's able to maintain board control in the early game uh, and then snowball probably into the late game. So his uh, sludge belcher is contesting my silverhand knight who unfortunately is missing his, his partner there, who got killed by the weapon. Uh, but this game may have been looking somewhat hopeless, but Glaive Suka, thankfully I saved it. What if I played it with the Amani Berserker on that earlier turn? Um, then I, you know, I don't know, would I be in trouble? Would I be in trouble? Um, it allowed for an effective trade. It allowed for an effective trade with the Belcher. Oh, betrayal! You don't often see betrayal. Wow. Well, I see you don't often see it. I mean, it, pre, prior to TGT, it used to be a thing that I'd see quite often in Arena. And since TGT, I uh, haven't really seen much of it. But interesting that he, he resorted to that card in that situation. He didn't get the full value from Betrayal. So um, he, he wasn't able to kill two minions with it. So it was quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Anyway, looking at this board, he has six damage, six attack. Um, I'm not going to play the Belcher. Because the Belcher just dies to the weapon plus the... Uh, uh, the four attack on board. Uh, I, I feel it's a waste of a belcher, especially against two minions like that. Uh, so I value board presence, and now I'm saying to him, if you kill my chicken, my lost tall strider, my scavenging hyena is going to get value. So I'm imploring him, or, or essentially saying to him, target the hyena, and he did. I'm happy to give up the hyena, because I do have one more uh, in this deck somewhere <clears throat> in my... In my um, in my uh, cards that are yet to come. But look, another auto barber. Okay, he's tanking though. He's tanking. He's down to 10. He's down to 10 health. And there's deadly shot. Do I use deadly shot now? See, these are the plays that count the most now. These are, you know, you're on the final boss. You're fighting for the 12th win. I decided, uh, no, Deadly Shot, not worth it on these two minions. Is that a mistake that's going to come back to haunt me? Do you know what, in hindsight, if he tanks the Belcher, he could get Wind Fury on the Hyena. He could throw the 3-2 and the 2-1 in. No, he's returned it to hand. Wow. And now he's going ham, he's going face. Wow, okay, use the weapon to go face. So these are very tense moments, very tense moments, because um, you're trying to figure out how to survive. And, you know, looking at that board, 
six, seven, eight, nine, nine plus five is 14. I'm dead on board unless I play either the Belcher or the Kraken. Which one do you play? The Kraken is better because if I play the Belcher, the 5-3 kills it and the Worgen will get Wind Fury. And then I'm just pretty much dead anyway then. Um, well, yeah, I, th I think I'd be dead. A Worgen with Wind Fury, yeah, plus a weapon attack from hand, I'd be dead. So in this situation, you know, I'm, I'm saying to Lance there, I'm saying, I think the rogue has it. I, I think I'm doomed. I, I think there's no way for me to come back now. Well, surely he has a way to kill the Kraken, surely. Or he has enough damage to finish me off. He has nine on board. He has to have another way to find four damage. Like well, he finds the Heckler and uh, he's actually trading. Wow. He's actually trading. If it was me in his shoes, would I trade? Knowing that you're facing a hunter, so you probably want to finish the game as quickly as possible, knowing what a hunter can do. So now, deadly shot. And it gets the five attack minion. That was the best outcome. The absolute best outcome. And now that Belcher that he returned to hand, it's coming back to haunt him. He should have killed that Belcher when he had the opportunity. But he has to know that I'm going to play it at some point. And now I'm blocking him from killing me. Interesting. Mm. Oh wow, Engaging mind control tech. Ooh, Shadow Pan Rider, you don't see that often. Six attack. And he's targeting my face. What's he got? Victory. And he's going face with that attack. And that's lethal. Right. Top deck. Beat that. I can see Lance is uh, quite amused there. Uh, he says well played. I would say no, that wasn't well played. It was top deck luck. Um, I don't. I, that game, that last game, there may have been some questionable plays on my part, um, particularly a play where I would have put a Belcher down, but perhaps given his Worgen Wind Fury on the slime. Um, and in hindsight, I survived because he returned the Belcher to my hand. And uh, so, yeah, um, all in all, though, really sort of exciting uh, series of games there. I'm super proud of that 12 win run. Um, it's hard to do it with Hunter in Arena, especially given the state of play with Hearthstone, with Mages and Paladins uh, dominating. So really, really, really proud of that run there. Thank you very much for joining me. And um, I do hope to see you all again very soon. Do check out my YouTube channel. Uh, there are other videos on there featuring my other uh, Arena runs and a few constructed games as well. Take care, everyone. See you soon.